Okay, let's get started. This is the first section of this quick start guide and possibly the most important. How you organize your SketchUp model is fundamental, not only to an efficient project workflow, but ultimately your success in producing detailed, accurate and attractive documentation in layout. And the way to organize a SketchUp model is by taking control of layers, groups and components. Let's quickly go through what this means by looking at this model that I recently created for a small house project. Let's start with the layers dialog in SketchUp. The first thing to do is to make sure you've got the layers dialog or the layers tray box open. If you're on a Mac, just go to window and then tick layers in the drop down menu to open the tab. If you're on a Windows machine, go to window, default tray, and then select show tray and make sure the layers tray is selected. Now, layers in SketchUp are not like in other CAD programs you may be familiar with. There's no stacking of layers or layer hierarchy. And SketchUp treats every entity equally, regardless of what layer it's on. Layers in SketchUp are about visibility. That's it. They allow you to toggle what is seen and what is not in the various scenes that you create and ultimately the drawings that you'll produce. When creating layers, it's important to work backwards. Think about how you want to control visibility first, what you want to see in your drawings, and then create the layers that correspond to what you want. You may be tempted to simply stick to your tried and tested CAD layering system that you're familiar with. Don't do that, it, it just doesn't work. Instead, think about layer types rather than line weights or materials and keep things as simple as you can. Nobody likes scrolling through long lists of layers to find the one you want. The beauty of SketchUp is in its simplicity and ease of use. So let's work with that and not against it. Personally, I like to split my layers into three categories. So if we have a look at this layer dialog over here, I'll make it a bit bigger for you to see. The first category is a kind of a location or phase. And that might be first floor, ground floor, an existing building, areas of demolition, new works, or context around the building, for example. The second relates to physical objects. So ceilings, doors, floors, joinery, walls, etc. And the final group relates to abstract items. So this will change with every project, but you're, you might have plan references or grid lines or 2D elements such as door swings or things you only want to see in 3D. And we'll talk more about those later. I also want to draw your attention to these other windows that I have open here. I use these a lot. The outliner and the entity info. Outliner has everything in your model listed. For you to see and you can quickly find things simply by selecting it in this list so if I select first floor ground floor roof etc the entity info tells you everything you need to know about each of those elements so we can see here the roof is selected it's on a layer called arc roof and it's called roof now if I expand that in the outliner you'll see that within that there are separate items called box cutter one box cutter two, there's a group for the roof sheeting, there's a bulkhead for the ceiling in the kitchen, etc. etc. Okay. We'll use these um, dialogue boxes a lot as we go through this course. So please make sure you've got them open. Using these dialogue boxes, I'd like to explain that entities can exist in SketchUp on more than one layer. A ground floor wall might be part of an area of new construction, for example. So the wall itself might be on a layer called walls, but also part of a wider group of walls which sits on the new works layer. So if we look at our ground floor group, we can see in the outliner, it's selected as ground floor. That's on a layer for the ground floor and it's called, the group is called ground floor. If I open that group by double clicking it, I can select the walls and those walls 
I'm on our group called ground floor walls, which we can see here. And they're on a layer called walls. And then within there, we've got external and ex internal walls. Okay, so we've got internal walls, external walls, and all of those also exist in the ground floor. I hope that makes sense. We'll get into groups and components in a little while. It's suffice to say that this is the most important way to organize your model and it gives you the ultimate control over what you see and what you don't. So, how do we do it? Well, let's go on to groups and components and we'll talk about that in the next video.